Hello and welcome to Treasure in Every Verse. I'm your host, author and Bible teacher, Kevin Madison. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, friends, we're back and we're going to get right back into our series, Foundation, Revelation, Purpose, and Determine. So we had already went through God's revelation. We had already went through God's purpose and we had landed on the final one, uh, Determine. So just a quick rehearse, since we've been off of it for approximately about a month, month and a half, we said this, here's an outline. God wrote the Bible from two perspectives, his perspective, a God view, and an earthly view from, from human's perspective. Then God has a purpose. God has purpose to reveal himself to his creation. So if you're wondering, if you are wondering what is going on why things are the way they are here's the all this is the answer folks the answer is god has purpose to reveal himself what do i mean by that i'm going to show you and explain to you exactly what i'm talking about but this is what the Bible is all about. The timeline, be, be careful when you're reading the scriptures, you have to get this timeline that the Bible gives to us. Not, not timeline that we want, because the Bible isn't, God isn't interested in what we want, folks. I mean, I know that sort of disappoints some people, and that aggravates some people, but the truth is God is not interested in pleasing us at all. Let me, because I'm not going to come back to this. Look, the beginning where God was by himself doing all this stuff, the fullness of time is when God came into the world and all the things that, that happens in the end. In the beginning, there's no evil and no sin. Here, God shows his attributes of himself, his eternality, the omnis, omnipotent, meaning God has all power, omnipresent, meaning God is everywhere at all time, and omniscience, meaning God knows everything. So what is this area right here? You, can, you and I can call it the omnis. That's what it is, the omnis, omnipotent, um, um, omnipresent and um, um, uh, omniscient. So that's what he was revealing here. Here he's revealing all his other attributes. Mercy, grace, goodness, kindness, wrath, righteousness, justice, judgment. So all of this stuff, all those attributes, God is revealing right here in the natural. This is creation. This is before creation. Here, God takes out of this time witnesses to people who are going to live here who have no clue about this right here. That's what's happening. Whether you believe that, it doesn't matter. The book ends is the first two books, the, the first book of the Bible, the first two chapters, and the last book of the Bible in the last, last two chapters. That's the whole progression of the book. And the theme behind that is this right here. God is literally, he wrote the future, his plan in advance in a book. It is absolutely astonishing from beginning to ending. God has given his purpose for creation. That's part of that revelation. And God has determined, please don't miss this. God has determined to show this through a specific plan. And believe me when I'm telling you, based on everything that's written in the book in past history of creation in present history of present time it is written 
exactly how things have happened and things are happening today. And there's no doubt in my mind based on the fulfillment of all the prophecies that was in the book that everything he said in the future is going to take place. Now, what does that mean? That these things are going to get really, 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 really bad. If you guys are thinking, for whatever reason, I have no clue. And this is what bothers me about Christianity. It is in a very dangerous place. Why? Because of all the false teaching that's going on. If we as believers, true born again believers, I don't know how any born again believer can think that things are going to get better. Can think for a minute that voting this person in the office or that person in the office is going to make things better. Supporting this group or that group. Promoting some morality, a character change, all this stuff. Friend, none of that, none of it is going to help what's coming. The God of all creation have written in his book exactly what's coming. And you know what's coming in our future. I don't know when it's going to be. You and I may be gone. For a thousand years or ten thousand, I don't know time, but I can tell you what's going to happen. There's coming a man, the most evil, wicked man who has ever stepped foot on the earth. God calls him the son of perdition. You know him as the Antichrist. Why is he going to take over? Because things are going to get so bad in this world that people are going to be begging this guy to take over because he's going to have solutions. Real solutions? No, man. Deception. Deception. He's coming. That means things are going to get horrible, friends. Absolutely, positively horrible. So you can pray and try to pray this away. God will never answer that prayer. Why, Kevin? Because he has already written the future. If he answered our prayer concerning the future, where we stop it based on our prayer, then that would make God a liar. Do you understand what I just said? If God answered those kinds of prayers, you and I, every true believer, can bow ourselves in true, humble worship before God and beg him with all of our might to save every single person today. And I tell you with all sincerity, with the authority of the word of God behind me, God would never answer that prayer. He said, God don't want people saved. No, you don't understand. If he did that, then the book of Revelation is garbage. Toss it in the trash because none of that's going to come to pass. Rip out the book, 2 Thessalonians. Because it's talking about the future. Rip it up because it will never come to pass. Go to the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And rip out everything in Matthew 24 and 25. Rip it up. Mark 13, 11, 12, Luke, same thing. Just rip all those passages out. Go to the Old Testament. And everything that happens in the millennium. Everything that it talks about Jacob's trouble, everything that happens about Israel in the future, Jesus coming back to, to deliver Israel, take Zechariah, rip it out, take Joel, rip it out. You have to rip out so much of the Bible. If God answered that kind of prayer. Why? Because he had already told you 
and I what he's doing. And if he saves everybody, then there won't be any antichrist. If he saves everybody today, everybody, and going forward, then who are all those millions and many of people living during the trans, uh, during the tribulation period? Who are those people? There won't be a false prophet. There won't be a, a, a antichrist, ten confederate nations of wicked people. Who, who are these people? That he's coming back to fight with the sword of his breath. You see what I'm trying to tell you guys? You cannot come to this book and have God speak prophetically and then answer prayers that goes against what he said. You are wasting your breath. God will never answer a prayer like that. What did he tell us to do? Preach the gospel. That's it. You don't worry about who gets saved because you can't impact it one way or the other. The only impact you and I can do is preach the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ as it's written because there's so many versions of that that is false. So, how should we pray? How should we understand that God has already determined the outcome? You say, well, well, if God's already determined the outcome, why in the world would I pray for anything? Because he commanded that we do. But he said we should pray how? According to his will. Is it God's will that everyone be saved? You need to answer that question. That's a question for you. I already know the answer. What are you saying? Is it God's will? Don't tell me about his desires. I know it's, oh, God desired that everybody be saved. Look, God desired that everybody don't lie. Have everybody stopped lying? No. God desired everybody not murder. Have everybody stopped murdering? No. So what are you talking about? God desired everybody be saved. What is that? What is God's absolute will? He tells us in Psalm 2 to anoint Christ as king. He tells you in 1 Corinthians 15 that Christ is going to put all his enemies under his feet and then he, God, is going to reign over all creation. He tells us in Revelation 21 that he himself will come into this world and then there would be no possibility of sin. And in Revelation 19, he tells you that there's going to be a lot of people who's going to stand before his throne who he himself is going to cast into the lake of fire. So for you to pray a prayer that is not in accordance with God's will, what obligation does he have to answer that kind of prayer? None. Zero. And guess what? He will not answer it. See, I don't like that. So what? Then use your determination and your wants and your desires and change what God has said. I bet you can. If you can, then move on, man. Agree with God. Start praying according to the scriptures and not what you want. There's nowhere in the Bible where God says, I'm going to do what you want me to do. That's not, that's not in the book. I heard it and read it where he says, deny yourself. 
that's what I read. That if you do anything according to my will, I will, I will uh, ask you. Yeah.